Welcome. Welcome to the listening session of the Duluth Public Schools ISD 709. We're really glad you're here. This is an opportunity for our community to come once a month and have an opportunity to share um, questions, concerns, celebrations, uh, insights, observations, um, questions, and um, we have an opportunity for, for you to be here. So thank you very much for coming. And um, we'll get started with our clerk, Sadowski, taking roll. But again, we thank you for coming tonight. Member Banks is excused. Uh, Member Eden? Present. Member Lockler? Here. Member Lopo? Here. Member Mason? Here. I am here, and Member Williams is excused. Superintendent Angus? I am here. And Assistant Superintendent Bonds? Present. Perfect. Deputy Clerk Zunich? Here. HR Director Severance? Here. And Board Secretary Kat? Here. And I also want to recognize that we have Director Jason Crane, Director Jen Larva, and Director Brenda Sparts in the back of the room as well, listening and, and, and sharing and concerns and questions that our community might bring forward. So again, we're here for our listening session. We have three speakers signed up for tonight. Two of them are here currently, and um, if our third speaker arrives before 6.15, um, they'll also be able to share, because our listening session does go from 5.30 to 6.15, and if you have signed up and you come a little late, you know, we understand the traffic jams and, and the delays, so we, uh, we appreciate that. And I also know that um, Member Williams and Member Banks will join us at some point as well, so thank you. Um, so I'm going to um, share with you our District ISC 709's um, mission and vision and our civility. So every student, every day, will be empowered with learning opportunities for growth, creativity, and curiosity in preparation for their future in that global community. And our Duluth Public Schools provides an academically engaging, safe, and inclusive environment with high expectations and responsible use of resources. So that's our district's mission and vision that we hold out in front of every vote and every item that we talk, we talk about and work with. Our 11 tools of civility, this school board recognizes 11 tools of civility that will provide increased opportunities for civil discourse in order to find positive resolutions to the issues that face our community. These tools include pay attention, listen, be inclusive, don't gossip, show respect, be agreeable, apologize, give constructive criticism, take responsibility, be honest and care for others, and show your evidence and support your reasons. I'll turn to Clerk Sadowski that will also just review our um, process for our listening session and our speakers tonight. Thank you. Yep, I'm just going to read some listening session information guidelines, just things to know when you come to speak to the board. So if you have handouts for the board, please give them to our school board secretary over here. Um, persons addressing the board will have three minutes total. When speaking, the use of names or any information that identifies a specific individual is prohibited and you will be asked to end your comments. Persons addressing the board may not merge their time in order to allow one person to speak more than three minutes. And the clerk of the board will start the stoplight timer at the start of each person's time. Green means go, yellow means wrap up, and red means stop, and that's right here. When the red light comes on, the chair will gavel you to signal you to end. And in the interest of respect for every listening session speaker, please hold any commentary during the speaker's time until they are finished. So our first speaker tonight is Lauren Martell, and on deck is Jane Hoffman. When you come up, the mic is on your stand, and you push the button so you see a green light. Oh, terrific. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Um, uh, just a couple of questions, uh, comments about the May election. If I'd been on the board, I would have questioned the wisdom of going to that election, how that would look to the public, uh, knowing what your disciples believe, what you were saying, everyone else saw you trying to avoid a real vote, and all your move did was deepen the cynicism and mistrust, and again, engendered a takedown the Empire reaction. Several aspects of the May election worked against you and you were blind to them. 
who's not going to show up for a low voter turnout election? The young people, of course. The old people are going to be there, and they're the ones who tend to vote against referendums because they're on fixed incomes, they don't have kids in school, and they own property. In that atmosphere, you set yourselves up with a voting demographic that tilted against you. And with a low voter turnout, not that many votes need to be swayed to the other column to tip the balance. And furthermore, if you intended to go out, get out of a November election and just have one question hanging out there in May, with no other noise around it, that question better be able to hold up to close scrutiny. Did you really think one question that could be distilled down to, are you okay with your taxes going up by millions, yes or no? was really going to fly in the, the very sensitive tax environment that exists? You really wanted that question out there all by itself? I was told a while back that I'm not wrong about everything. Well, when I walked into the voting poll, well into the morning and discovered I was 12th voter, I said to the four election judges sitting idly by that the superintendent and the school board thinks this is to their advantage but I'm feeling a lot of pushback in this community, and I think they're going to lose. One of you said after the November election that the people have spoken. Well, the rest of the people have spoken three times now, very loud and clear. Maybe it's time you listen and reevaluate how you're listening and communicating with them. This wasn't just about money. The May election was a bad idea and your approach to the vote was all wrong. One of my neighbors came up to me and said, they only know us when they want more money, then they don't know us anymore. Another one said, they just think we're stupid. Obviously, it's flawed representative government that is so disconnected from what a large part of the public is feeling and thinking. Essentially, you got burned by your blind spots. And I don't think I'm wrong about this. Thank you. Our next speaker is Jane Hoffman. I'm going to start off with a brief introduction. Hopefully, keep it to three minutes. Um, my name is Jane Hoffman. I moved here in 2012 to work for AmeriCorps for $800 a month from Los Angeles. My sister thought I was crazy, but I was dedicated to the cause of working for Duluth schools because my father grew up in Duluth and he was the ninth of nine children. My son adapted to the school and he had a good advisor, Heidi Lyle. Um, I enjoyed my experience as an AmeriCorps representative and I started a Native American club. John Claw said I was too slow to help with cross country, but I was once a two-time state champion. That was a joke. Anyways, um, over time, I, I became a sub in the Catholic schools, and then I went back to subbing for Duluth schools in November of 2022. In January of 2024, Mayor Creek Academy had a desperate need for a one-on-one -on -one student, and I applied and took the job. I was unaware that the job was temporary, and I didn't find out till May. So throughout the whole summer, I, um, I was told I have to keep applying for jobs in order to secure a permanent one. Well, I, I applied to 12 to 14 jobs and got zero interviews, but I did get two interviews in non-ranked positions that were more clerical oriented. So I started getting confused about it and inquiring to different departments within the HR. Charlie Cook had already solved one of my problems in July, and I felt like he adequately solved it. So I found out in the last two days most of the answers that I had. One of them was, why was I not getting any interviews at the school? Then I started calling principals and asking them, may I interview here? And they told me, you have to go through special ed. You have to go through that department in order to secure and establish an interview. So in the last two days, I was able to get the green light to get one interview. But I was pretty disheartened by this point. And I had already told Melanie at TOC. Please don't say any names. Yeah. Okay. Just, just say the, the department. I had already told my boss at TOC, I just go back to Sami. I apologize. Okay. So um, in the last two days, 
the HR department and special ed has rallied and given me proper information that I was completely lacking. But I didn't want to miss this opportunity to speak and tell you how dedicated and how much I care about Duluth schools. My final statement is, as a substitute, it's fun to go to different schools and, and you know, elbow to elbow with great subs like another one I had, which I can't say his name, and to teach things about like Plato's Republic and the allegory of the cave. But once you have a permanent job, you have to stick to the nuts and bolts of that job and execute what you're trying to do to improve yeah. that student's life. That's, okay. Thank you. Yeah, and that's what I wanted to say. Thank you for listening. I also remember being on the school board okay. and I ran for it in 2015. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Our next speaker is Scott Zenz. Is Scott here tonight? So seeing that as the last, seeing that that's our last listening session speaker, thank you all for coming tonight. We have a board meeting that starts at 6.30 and you're all welcome to you know, stay and um, be a part of that process and, and those, that information as well. Thank you. Thank you.